Jonathan Turley is a law professor at George Washington University Law School. A cool head, not a right winger. Been around a long time. And I wanted you to come on to assess coolly, logically, the legal exposure potentially from this story. Well, there's considerable exposure. You know, the interesting thing about the original Russian collusion argument is that colluding with Russians is not a crime under the right. criminal code. There's no such crime. There's conspiracy. But the question is, conspiracy to do what? The case, I, I've been saying this, many people have been saying this, for actual crime is actually getting weaker by the day. There's really not much evidence to suggest an actual federal crime. You know, you compare it to this, there is a basis for a criminal charge if these allegations pr are proven. Now, you have the Uranium One deal, which right. is a pay-for-play allegation. That's a serious crime. The Clintons could very well show that there was no relationship between the half a million dollars that went to Bill Clinton and what the Senate, what the, the State Department did. But that is a classic criminal allegation if it were to be proven. With regard to the Fusion GPS and the dossier, um, there are issues there, particularly if people lie to investigators, uh, either congressional or federal. That's the type of crime that gets charged in D.C. It's not so the very specific. I think what you're referring to is what apparently happened last month before right. the Senate uh, committee investigating this, where John Podesta, the former chairman of Hillary's campaign, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the former head of the Democratic Party, were asked directly, "Did you pay for this? Did you?" Did money from your coffers wind up at Fusion GPS? And both said no. That's right. And one of the people in the most precarious position is this attorney, Mark Elias, who right. uh, who um, was the general counsel of the campaign. The New York Times reporters, two of them, have accused him of expressly saying there was no relationship at all with the Clinton campaign or the DNC and the dossier. He was also sitting next to John Podesta with congressional investigators when Podesta made the same denial. And that gets you into very difficult areas. Area of what's called 18 U.S.C. 1001. That's when false statements are given to federal investigators. And that has to be a concern. Doesn't mean that uh, that crime occurred, but it's an obvious concern. Can you think of an alternative explanation? I mean, it's, I, I will just take off the table the idea that the head of the campaign and the head of the party didn't know about millions being spent on opposition research. That's not a credible claim. Is there some other way they could explain their behavior before that committee? Well, that's what the, the investigators really have to look at. I mean, it's hard to argue that this isn't appropriate for investigation. There's serious questions here. It doesn't mean there's crimes, but there's serious questions. And it's also true that, you know, if you're investigating the, the Trump side for coordinating or colluding with Russians, this would seem to be an analogous situation. Now, having said that, the moral high ground in Washington has always been measured in millimeters. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm not too sure I'm going to cast aspersions or or congratulations on either side. But there, that's always a safe bet, but yeah. So but there there are serious criminal allegations here that, that could potentially be moved on. So I think that both sides need to acknowledge that many people felt that after Comey was fired, there was a legitimate basis for the special counsel investigation. It's hard to deny that there's legitimate basis for the congressional investigation into Uranium One, into the dossier, uh, to find out what these facts are. And if people People lied in the course of that. That's the type of crime people get indicted for in Washington. So um, the neocons in D.C. hated Trump, and so apparently a bunch of them got together and funded this opposition research that became the Trump dossier, the Washington Free Beacon, and uh, all the people associated with it. Is, is there any legal questions around that? Well, frankly, I don't see the crime in gathering evidence, even from foreign sources, right. any more than I did with Trump and the allegations on that side. Where you get into some serious problems is if you're trying to acquire classified information or if you are encouraging the theft of information or the hacking of systems, right. those can be charged as a, as, as a crime. But in terms of gathering information, as you know, that's a long-standing sure. practice in Washington, D.C. Sounds right to me. But what you really have to look for are people that may have given false information on investigations. And that's what prosecutors start with, because those are people that can be easily charged. Right. This is how Martha Stewart wound up in federal prison. <laughs> Jonathan Choi, thank you. Thanks, Doctor.